Super. So hello and uh, welcome to today's Impact Room. Uh, today I'm delighted to be joined by Kirsten Williamson Gunn. Uh, Kirsten is the founder of Elevate Women and has had a long and successful banking career as a senior leader and director with Barclays. Um, Kirsten is now a confidence and transition coach. She helps female leaders build unshakable confidence so that they can speak up, step up and stand out. Uh, Kirsten, hello, how are you? I'm really well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really good. Uh, thanks, thanks for joining us. Really looking forward to talking to you and hear, hearing more. Um, so, I, I mean, I know we spoke a little bit when um, about this when we first spoke, but would you mind sharing for everyone else what made you transition from your corporate career into a coach to help female leaders? Of course. So, as you said, I had a long and successful career in banking, but about two years before I left, my parents' health, both my parents became very ill. So my dad was terminally ill and my mum was diagnosed with dementia. And you can imagine it's not the best of times. I felt totally out of control because I'd always felt like I was in control. And for the first time in my life, I started losing myself, my confidence, felt like I couldn't do anything about the situation. And yeah, just because I'd been training as a health coach that for a year prior to that, I was able to get myself through it. And that's when I realised that I wanted to spend my time helping people like me, because you try and keep it all together, especially when you have a big job and people think everything's fine because it looks like that on the outside, but it certainly wasn't in the inside. And, you know, the things that were really available to me were counselling or taking time off sick. And I didn't want either of those. So finding a way to get myself through it was really important. And now that's that's what I help people do. But my business has kind of evolved from there. And, um, yeah, I do more of the fun stuff, too. <laughs> so that's that's how I ended up here anyway. OK, well, fab. Uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, so, I, I mean, in your experience then as a confidence and a transition coach, what are some of the common challenges you think that face the women uh, when trying to sort of when they're trying to elevate themselves in, in their careers or business? Well, I suppose there's three that that stand out to me for me. One is we are often perfectionists. That in a career setting, that can mean that we don't apply for something until we think every single box is ticked, either in the role that we're currently doing or for the role that we're going for. So it means that often we tend to stay longer. Mm. And yeah, that that's that's a blocker because we don't need to tick every single box. Mm. I think. The other thing is studies show that women and girls are more likely to make shame based meaning about themselves in the event of setbacks or failures. So if something doesn't go to plan, we are more likely to make it mean something about ourselves. Right. So I'll give you an example. This was an example that was true for me. I went for a big promotion. And I was a borderline benchmark, so I didn't get the job. Now, my strategy for the interview process was listen to everybody else. Because that that can be what happens. You have everybody in your ear telling you what they want to see, what they want to hear, how you need to behave. You lose yourself. I certainly did. And because of that, I borderline benchmark, so I didn't get the job. I then made that mean that I'm terrible at assessments. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was I didn't go for another job for a long time. So again, I delayed my progress because I thought this is about me. I'm a bad person at assessments. But actually, when I woke up and realized that I just needed a different strategy <laughs> or a different approach, less people in my ear, more about what I want to bring to an interview, the next time I did my interview was a very different experience and I got the mm. job. So there are two things. Mm. The third thing is 
we have our own inner glass ceiling. There's a lot of conversation about glass ceilings for women in employment. The challenge we have is that that is there and we create our own. Mm -hmm. If I had a pound for every time someone said, oh, I can't see me being able to get that far, or I don't think someone like me could be in that type of role, or they come back from maternity leave and they say, it's going to take me ages to get back to just where I started. That kind of mindset and belief will come true if we tell ourselves that enough. So those are three things. And then you wrap into that self-doubt, imposter syndrome, whatever you want to call it, on top of it. And if we're not careful, (laughs) our heads can explode with all the reasons why we should stay where we are, because that's where we're meant to be. Yeah, thanks for sharing every single one of those. I've come across numerous times, uh, you know, both from my, as again myself, you know, my own sort of thinking, but also the the the, the female leaders that we have, have worked with and helped support. You know, it's just so true. So, I mean, how how can they overcome these obstacles, um, Kirsten? The first thing that I learned to do for myself, and the first thing that I always do now with my clients is start working on the number one most important relationship you have. And that's the relationship you have with yourself. (laughs) And often that's the relationship we invest the least in. And it's probably the poorest relationship we have. So that's where I always start and start to look at how we can feel better about ourselves, how we can see ourselves differently, how we can talk better to ourselves because let's face it we all talk to ourselves and some of us would never talk to anyone else the way we talk to ourselves yeah so we start with that relationship and just starting to challenge some of the beliefs and ideas and mindsets that we have so for example instead of being focused on perfection start to celebrate progress Mm. because progress is is brilliant You know, if we could all be just a tiny little bit better today than we were yesterday, that's a huge impact over time. But we don't always think about that. So that these types of little mindset shifts are are massively, massively important and challenging some of the expectations that we have of ourselves. Sometimes our expectations can be so high that we're kind of setting ourselves up for failure and then we're going to make the shame-based meaning we're going to make it mean something awful about ourselves and then we're just not going to try ever again Mm. and other times we have these really baseline expectations Mm. so it's just challenging some of some of that stuff so building a great relationship with yourself and starting to really think about what are we thinking what are we saying what are we feeling one of the um one of the first things that i do when we're trying to build better relationships with ourselves is start to pay attention to our intuition start to get out of our head and into our body now if someone had said that to me 10 years ago i would have thought they're a bit woo woo and stay away because my head's a good place but it's not always but just what I mean is being able to check in with yourself and asking yourself what you're feeling Mm -hmm. being able to put some language to it and asking yourself what you need so that you can then go and resource for yourself means that you're back in your power yeah we spend a lot of time asking everybody else how they are Mm, what they need. Mm, mm. But I wonder how many times we've actually asked ourselves mm. this week, this month. Mm. I encourage my clients and I ask myself every day, what mm. am I feeling and what do I need? What's going to mm. make me feel that little bit better? Mm. 
Yeah, some great points there. And I think I can't re I think it's Brian Tracy, the quote, but it's um, you are not what you believe, but what you believe you are. Um, and and, and I'm, I'm reading with the office, actually, as a team, we do audio books and we're doing uh, at the moment we're doing Jen Sincero's um, You Are a Badass. And it's the third time I've read it in five years and she's fantastic. But, you know, the thing that she often says almost at the end or beginning of every chapter is love yourself, you yeah. know, because it, and, and I think it, it, it it's true for everyone. But I think as more so as much for women um, as, mu as much as men, because we do put all that pressure on. And, you know, and someone else said as well, it was one of the ladies I had on another impact room, one of the female leaders. She said a question to ask is, is this true? You know, all these things that we think, you know, we, we're talking ourselves out of everything, as you say, or into things. And it's not actually the truth. No, challenging what we think is a really helpful mm. thing to do. Is it true? Is it really true? Mm. What have I got that backs that up? Because yeah. the chances are you don't really have anything if you dig yeah. around enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're, they're kind of the, the mindset, um, the relationship with yourself, getting back into your body, into your intuition. Um, and then it's about being calm because if you want to be confident being calm and I think it's so underrated mm. because we almost pride ourselves on being so busy mm. and I certainly did in my old career I mean I was running from one thing to the next to the next and then I wondered why I couldn't respond well enough to a question because mm. I had stop to gather myself mm. so I I kind of teach people to slow down mm. in the first instance and mm. be able to breathe mm. conscious breathing is so important I mean mm. we all know how important breathing is mm. but what's the quality of our mm. breathing? probably not great unless yeah. we consciously breathe so that's one of the, the tips and tools that we, we work with. Journaling is another thing. Mm. Anything you can get out of your head and on paper, mm. you're going to be more rational when you read something. Mm. When you think something, you can think it over and over again, make it mm. bigger, mm. and it becomes bigger than it actually is. Mm. So journaling I find really helpful too. Yeah, it's something else that we've been uh, talking a lot about in the office and all started doing in recent years, really. I think, you know, that focus on your mindset is really sort of important, isn't it? OK, so as a speaker and a facilitator, um, what strategies or techniques do you find most effective in helping the, the women? I mean, we've talked about, you know, mindset shift, you know, journaling, etc. I mean, are there any other practical tips or exercises that women can 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 implement to boost, you know, their self self? self-assurance would you say? I think the big thing is being able to face into whatever is causing you a delay or a disruption to your progress and quite often we want to turn away from that we mm. want to avoid it or ignore it but you're never going to change it if mm. that's what you do so what I like to do is help people really face into the things that are unhelpful, that are going to slow them down, and then have a plan, a proper growth plan that is aligned with where you're going and has practical things that you are doing on a daily, if not a daily, weekly basis that means that you're applying these things so it's all well and good to have a mindset of progress. You know, that sounds obvious, fine, maybe even easy. But where you start to get the results is where you are in that mindset and applying that mindset and using it and doing something with it. And that's what we build a growth plan around. Mm, great. Thank you. And I mean, all this, all this. I suppose stuff that 
we seem to deal with I mean do you have a do you think does it come from one place or is it just from it you know is it society is it evolutionary you know is it sort of nature nurture you know it, it is it is it something that just will you, you know we hope eventually change over time um, or you know because you speak to female leaders or I do and they're really concerned about the world their daughters you know are going to come into and making things much better for that next generation and that's great but you know generational change you know as we know is it's too long too isn't long. it you know it takes too long I mean there is progress I, I get to have a career and you know i don't have pressure to have a family or any of those things whereas my parents different scenario yeah um so there is progress but like you say it's generational it takes too long i think um we all have a responsibility to challenge some of these societal ideas um and not just about women there's so many different things so I think it's an on us mm. but I think it's it's too slow and mm. and you could say that about many things right now mm. you, you see in the world that we wonder why that is still uh, or in fact in some cases we're going backwards well absolutely if you look at what's happening in the US and other places it's, you know it's uh, awful isn't it mm. I mean it's impossible to believe that that's happened, but it has. Mm. So I think, you know, yes, we can look at um, structures outside of ourselves that if we allow them, will hold us back. But there's also the structures we create for ourselves and the things that are within ourselves that we need to start looking at and challenging. Yeah. And when you bring all of the pieces together, then I think that's when we can make the progress. Yeah. But sometimes the hardest thing is when we believe what we're told, mm -hmm. that our position is or our places or how we should behave or how we should think. If we actually believe that, then you know, we're, we're not solving the problem mm -hmm. at all. Mm, yeah excellent points and so I mean when you look at your initiatives and programs that you help to or implement to support and empower these women and you've talked about some um, sort of top tips and things I mean um, can you highlight any success stories or impactful outcomes that you've seen and resulted things that you would sort of shout about make, maybe made you most proud? <laughs> well people come to me for lots of different reasons I, I help people get jobs uh, I help people that have been made redundant and feel like it's them that have been made redundant and can't see them getting themselves a job even on a par with the one they lost. I help lots of people get bigger, better jobs with more money because it's in them and they can do that. That's great. I think the work that makes me the most proud is when people come to me because they feel awful they they they've lost themselves like i did and they just don't feel good in themselves and then by the end of our work they say they can't recognize the person that they were uh, i've had that a lot of times and i've also had and it sounds cheesy but i've had this multiple times that i've changed people's lives because when they feel so limited and sometimes like they're just never going to get their way out of where they are mm -hmm. and then they're doing the most amazing things that's what really lights me up when i set my business up i uh, called it return to work because i wanted to work with people at the most stressful times in their career which is when they go back to work after long-term absence but what happened was people were getting their confidence up before the end of the program and then they'd say I'm going to leave and mm -hmm. do something else because they had the confidence to just change it all so it turned out I was actually helping people leave more than I was helping people go back which is why I had to rebrand and call myself Elevate Women. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, I help people 
build the confidence and the plan to do whatever it is they want and that's what lights me up fabulous it must be so satisfying you know and and it can just be sometimes the smallest things isn't it you know because if we can if we can reframe how we see the world or what because again I think nothing has any meaning does it unless we the, it, it, we the meaning we attribute to it ultimately you know and, and we everything we want is right is right in front of us isn't it the, it already exists in the universe and the world and everything you know and we can achieve so much anybody can really just with that switch that switch turned on exactly yeah and that's what I love to do yeah, fantastic. And um, and so, what what would you say? I mean, if we look at businesses right now and and talent pipelines, and you know, you'll know yourself. You, you know, women of menopause age are leaving the workforce, really struggling, and sort of uh, generally, uh, sort of people leaders in uh, and sort of workers in over fifties, you know, leaving the workforce, and young um, females that you know they're struggling, especially if they've got children or single moms, and you know they're feeling really overwhelmed with everything, really. But I mean. I mean, from a business perspective, if they want to improve their talent pipelines and achieve more diverse leaders for the future, what what advice would would you give um, to them, Kirsten? I think you've hit on something really important because the, there are studies showing how many fifty plus year old women are leaving. I mean, I left a thirty two year career at forty nine, and you lose an immeasurable amount of experience, knowledge, contacts, skills, you know, when not, I'm not saying about me, I mean, generally speaking, yeah. when you lose people that have been around that long. What is great to see is that there is so much more talk and support about menopause, because I think for women, we kind of get hit at so many different stages in our career. Um, we, I think I read something the other day about how a, a, a woman's salary is just delayed massively through having children mm -hmm. and it takes years to get that back on track. So it's good to see that there's this sort of activity and support going on in the workplace. I think the most important thing for businesses is to look at who's coming up through the ranks because I think often there is a, a real focus on senior leadership. But when you lose those people, where do you where do yeah. you fill them from? Mm -hmm. And you need to nurture these people that are coming up mm -hmm. through the ranks because it's easier for them to leave. They're less mm -hmm. tied. So look at the look at the um, ambition of people and help grow the skill and the experience. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that has always been true, the best leaders, the best organisations get to know and understand their people mm -hmm. and they have flexibility. Now, I know that it's very difficult in big organisations to say to people, you can work whatever pattern suits you and you can work from home or you can come into the office. But if you try and run any business with a one size fits all rule, yeah. you are going to lose great people mm. because it's just it makes things more difficult for people. And I see a lot of people now when they're looking at their next role, they're not looking at salary so much. They're looking at one culture yeah. and they're looking at two flexibility and working pattern. Mm. And they will compromise on pay for those two other things mm -hmm. so any organization that is overlooking or underestimating the importance of those two things I think are going to lose people and we all know how costly it is not just in time or revenue but actual expense mm -hmm. of bringing great people into an organization yeah and if they come into a culture that's not caring about their people they won't stay I mean mm. I've seen very senior people come into big organizations and last for a month mm. because they will not hang around in an environment like that mm. and I dread to think how much money it costs to bring them in yeah. or the deals that were done getting these very senior MD people into organizations mm. to leave within a month yeah 
Yeah, I mean, some great, great points. And I think, like you say, I mean, just that flexibility, because as well, you mentioned it earlier when we were talking about how women sometimes don't want the bigger jobs because they see, you know, the stress, the hours, you know, the pressure, etc. But businesses have got to sort of counteract that early on, haven't they? To, As you say, to nurture this talent that we have, because people seem to be quite well I'm not saying um, able to attract more diverse talent at more junior levels but you do see it you know whether it be a, a minority a ethnic minorities or gender there's a lot more at the bottom of the of the sort of funnel and they just all get lost in you know between middle management senior leadership and it you know it's mainly due to as some of the issues that all a lot of the issues you've raised and um, and the fact that they go this isn't for me you know and they they, they check out and do something totally different don't don't they? they they do or equally poor over promotion mm. so putting someone in a position because it's it's a good look it's a great fit whatever you want to say but this individual isn't quite ready mm. if there's no support structure mm. about that mm then that's awful for the individual because that can hugely knock their confidence mm. and mean that they don't go for that type of role again. Yeah, and absolutely. it's really awful on, on the business. Yeah. So if you're going to, to promote into, not over-promote, but you're promoting a bit ahead of time, you've got to make sure that you've got a decent structure to support the individual. Mm. The other thing is, especially with maternity returners, Studies show, I think the last study I read, 50% of maternity returners leave the organisation they return to within 12 months. Wow. I mean, that is, <laughs> that's just horrendous. And some of the time, what I see is when women go back to work after maternity leave, they are loath to ask for anything different mm, mm. because they feel like they're in debt. Mm. At this time off, they owe the organisation, so they need to suck it up and work the way they worked before. Mm. And you know that doesn't help them. That doesn't help anyone. And that will be a contributor to why yeah. people leave, Yeah, which is totally avoidable. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would imagine as well, you can, you, you, and I, I've had a lot of these conversations with return to um, workers from, from a maternity. They'll always speak to us and, and it'll be like, oh, I don't, the role that I'm going back to, I just can't do that now. You know, I want more flexibility, et cetera. Well, why aren't the businesses going to them and sort of having this conversation saying, look, we want it to, we want to ease you back in, you know, and do you think you can do the role as it was or can we make some changes that will help and support you? Because as you, say if they've been with that business for a long time they've got a lot of skills and experience valued get them straight back in rather than bringing yeah. somebody new in yeah mm -hmm. and and sort of help them thrive and and sort of go on as they can then increase their hours if that's the case it's not the case for everyone but it just seems crazy doesn't it it is uh, and, and you know that's another thing that keeping in touch with your talents mm. whoever they are if they're out of the business I mean, I remember working with someone who'd been out of the business because she, she'd had stage four leukaemia. Mm. Horrendous time. Brilliant individual. But no one had kept in touch with her. So her first day back at work, you know, was 10 times more difficult than it needed to be. Mm. And it's just people don't forget that, do they? they yeah, yeah. That quote around, we'll forget what you say, but we'll mm. never how you made us feel yeah so keep in touch with your people or or at least agree before they go off you know that would be a smart move how how do you want us to stay in touch mm. so you don't yeah. feel like you're intruding when people are poorly or on maternity leave but keeping that relationship so important yeah, absolutely. All right, great. Well, I mean, we could talk about this subject all day. It's that it's what we said before, isn't it? But um, I mean, is there anything else before we sort of close off that you think uh, you'd like to add that we've not covered? No, I mean, I could, I, I could go on for ages. I just, I think communication's everything, isn't it? It's two way. 
people need to talk to each other. We need to figure out what works for everybody. And then you can have the results you want for both parties. But no communication, it won't happen. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's been lovely to to sort of uh, speak with you and thank you for imparting so much of your wisdom, um, Kirsten. I'm sure it'll be of value to a lot of people. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.